I welcome everyone today in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we're asking that you speak to every heart today and bring us to the place of promise, the place of provision, and the place of prosperity, and the place of power that you have for every believer in Jesus' name. Amen. Wash off, clean off any idea, any indoctrination that is not according to your perfect provision for us on Calvary at Calvary in Jesus' name. Amen. Bring us to the abundance you have for everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We're coming to Psalm 73. And we're reading from verse 1. Psalm 73, reading from verse 1. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as of a clean heart. Please don't forget that. God is good. All the time, God is good. To the church, God is good. To the believer, in every generation, God is good to the people who are looking up to Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. God is good. Now, we come to a personal perception of an individual. Verse 2. In verse 2, it says, But as for me, this is personal, this is how this person viewed life, as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, for I, this is personal, it's not talking about the promise of God, the provision of God, the power of God, the privilege of the believer. This is personal to him. I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, telling us how he still viewed everything. For there are no bands in their death and their strength is firm. That's his own understanding. When you observe the wicked, when you observe the people here on earth, in the way, in the generation in which he lived, he said, there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, there are not, they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Now, when we come back to verse 1, you understand, as we look at the father of the nation, Abraham. Abraham was prospered by the Lord. And instead of Abraham envying the wicked, Abimelech and all the other Gentiles, they envied him. Come to Isaac. Isaac knew that God is good, was good unto him. And when he planted that year, God gave him a hundredfold. And so, Isaac will not say, I was envious at the wicked. But the people of the world, they envied Isaac. They said, since you have come to us, uh, all the wealth, everything has gone to you. And look at Moses at the time of Israel. Moses will not say, I envy Egypt, the wicked. I envy those people because they have this, but we don't have water came out of the rock for the children of Israel. Look at Joshua. Joshua will not say, I envy the Canaanites because they are blessed, but we are not blessed, and they, are, they don't have any bands in their death, but we suffer all the time. No, Joshua was not envious at the Canaanites. The Canaanites were envious at them, and they even bound together about five confederate kings. They wanted to destroy Joshua because they were prospering. And the Lord said, I give you the good of the land. They are prepared 
kept the land, all the water, the gardens, and all the wells, everything belongs unto you. Come to the New Testament, the thief cometh, but for to steal uh, and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that she may have life and that she may have it more abundantly. And Peter said, Lord, we are forsaking all. What shall we have? He said, all of you that are following me, that are forsaking land and houses and brothers and sisters, he says, you will inherit a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come eternal life and Paul the apostle said my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus what I'm saying is as you look at the scriptures from the Old Testament onto the New Testament you'll see that God created everything for man and for the believer to enjoy after he created the whole earth and all the seas and all the all the mountains and all the land and all the trees and everything then he created man and he said multiply replenish the earth everything is yours everything in the garden everything outside the garden so you understand god actually wants us to enjoy the things that he has created and it is not only for the sinners in the world today we're looking at the message the desirable prosperity of the righteous the desirable prosperity of the righteous we're reading from psalm 35 verse 27 psalm 35 we're reading from verse 27 it says let them shout for joy not envy not complaining not grumbling and not being sorry for themselves let the righteous shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause yea let them say continually let the lord be magnified which has pleasure joy delight in the prosperity of his servant the lord has pleasure as delight as joy and he has made provision for the prosperity of his servants we're looking at the message under three perspectives number one believing and obeying the laws of promised prosperity you understand there are laws that govern everything in fact, when God created Adam and Eve and everything was available, he gave them a law, dress and till the land and keep the garden. The Lord wanted them to do something. He gave them a law so that the prosperity he has given them will abide for them. You will understand the laws of prosperity. You will believe the laws of prosperity. You will obey the laws of prosperity in this life. From today, prosperity will start in your life. Amen. Number two, building in obscurity while laboring for perishable prosperity. You see, there are, of course, some believers. You see, those some believers, what had happened is this they understand the laws of prosperity and the law works for everyone for example if i have an object in my hand i throw it up it will come down why not because i'm a believer not because i'm sanctified not because i'm holy because of the law if a wicked man throws up something it will come down. Why? Not because it's wicked, not because it's unrighteous, not because he has magic, because of the law of gravity. If you know how to fly an aeroplane, you get to the cockpit and then you do the right thing and you follow the laws of aviation, you will fly the plane not because you are born again but because of the law 
if an unbeliever gets to that same place and he applies the laws of aviation it will fly the plane not because he's wicked but because he follows that law if you sow if you acquire acres of land and you sow appropriately at the right season the seed will grow and you will harvest a bumper crop and then you will sell you'll be prospered not because you are born again or because you are not born again but because you follow the laws of sowing and reaping and so the unbelievers they know the laws of working hard and the laws of having vision and the laws of taking risk and the laws of having a destination and they want it and they rise up early in the morning and they pursue because they follow the law they are able to have prosperity but unfortunately for unbelievers it's only perishable prosperity but you you will have prosperity that you will not abandon God you will not leave God in your prosperity you will serve God more and you will do more good in the life in which you will live you'll be happy now and I can see your face there forever forever you'll be happy in Jesus name <laughs> point number three beginning with the opportunities on the ladder of preferable prosperity we cannot get rich in one day it's like a ladder and we start at the beginning we don't jump to the end of the ladder that will break your bones that will smash your head on the ground you see prosperity as a ladder and gradually as you put your feet step by step one after the other on the ladder opportunities will open before you open doors will open before you and one day at a time as you go through those open doors one day at a time as you get all the opportunities and you always move in you are not doubting you are not slacking back you are not lazy you are not indolent you are not sleeping where you ought to be walking one day one step one activity and then earning saving spending living reasonably your own preferable profitable prosperity will be yours in jesus name let's come to number one now number one believing and obeying the laws of prosperity we're coming to deuteronomy chapter 28 and we're reading from verse 1 deuteronomy chapter 28 reading from verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i command thee this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high where is the man where is the woman the lord will set thee on high above above all nations of the earth looks like the man in psalm 73 had forgotten this promise and provision of god and instead of all the nations of the earth being envious of him he now he saw the wicked above him beyond him and he was now envying them but the lord says if you will keep my commandment and my word he says i will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth look at verse 2 and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord 
thy God. Number one, you need to desire what God has promised. If you say, I'm all right, I accept my situation. When I get to heaven, I'll be happy. I'm not happy now. I cannot pay school fees now. I cannot pay house rent now. But thank God there are believers, they're charitable, they're helping me. I'm all right. If you are all right like that, nothing else will happen. But number one, a desire in your heart. I have a desire to be a possessor of what the Lord has provided for me. Number two, inquire. You inquire. What are the laws of prosperity? What are the promises of God that he has given to his children? How can I come into the flow of the success and the prosperity that the Lord has provided for me? Number three is to acquire. You acquire the skill that is necessary. You see, in the world in which we live today, we need to know how to use the computer. We need to understand how to find information from the internet. The student today is not like the student uh, 20 years ago that he has to go to the library and all he can find is in the library books. All the information is there on the internet and even the way they study and the way the teachers uh, give instruction, it is through that uh, method they're able to give and if you don't acquire the skill of the modern life how we do things how things are done you'll be left behind what i'm saying is the promise of god is there for you but then you are not going to be looking at unbelievers and saying well that's them that's them the unbelieving students are making first class well whatever i just want to go through this life i don't uh, desire you must desire because the lord has said you will be the head and not the tail i will not be the tail I said, I will not be the tail. And then you admire, admire. You see, look at yourself. If you were able to have a personal car, if you were able to have a personal house, if you were able to educate your children, if you were able to put food on the table every time, how would that be? See yourself like that and appreciate that and admire that kind of life. You see, it is that. It comes the inside. The one who is lacking behind the one who cannot move forward is from the heart. The one who cannot produce anything is from the heart. But you admire when you get there, not if, because you are getting there. And then you say, when I get there, this is what I expect. And I admire that. I admire myself succeeding. Admire myself prospering. Admire myself being able to help other people. You admire. Now you require. It's going to take some effort. And then you require this of yourself. You speak to your soul. Get up in the morning. You speak to your soul. Get to work. You speak to your soul. Find work. You speak to your soul. Get started in whatever you have to do. Get started and move forward. You will require of yourself. You see, after we finish primary school, secondary school, nobody and no teacher, no lecturer is going to run after us. If you are at the university, for example, and you don't go to class, nobody is going to, you know, whip you, penalize you. That's your choice. If you go to university and you want to join gang and clubs, no lecturer will say, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? But it is you that will be the policeman after yourself, that will wake yourself up that will say I am going to do this when you come out of school out of university nobody is going to say you know get up and do this if you decide to keep on sleeping till 10 o'clock in the morning nobody is going to say anything to you that's your choice that's your pattern of life 
you are the one to require of yourself this blessing of God that the Lord has provided for me I will get it I'm going to come from the back of the queue and I'm going to get to the front of the queue that's what I require of myself I will do it I didn't hear my people and then you perspire you are ready now to perspire you said it will take sweat in the sweat of thy face that will eat and therefore you're not afraid of your sweat you're not afraid of getting tired you're not afraid to get out in the morning and then to go out and perspire there on the field and perspire there tax your brain if you leave that brain and you don't tax it, it will go dull, it will go dormant, it will go dead. And for example, look at my right hand. Are you looking up? And then if I hang it on a bandage and I leave it there, nothing wrong with the hand, nothing wrong with the bone, nothing wrong with the muscles. I hang it there one week, I don't take it out. And then one month, I don't take it out. And they say, uh, Pastor, brother, what's happening to your hand? I just want the hand to rest. I don't want it to be active or to do anything. I hang it there for three months. By the time I remove the bandage and try to stretch it, it will not stretch. It has become used to that position. It's dormant. It's useless. It's dead. The same thing with the brain you have a brain how many of you have brains put it to work put it to work tax it that's the perspiration you perspire and then you inspire when people look at you you are a go-getter when people look at you you're visioner when people look at you you are up and running spiritually you are up materially you are up professionally you are up in every area of your life no bone in your body is dead or weakened every part of your life is what it ought to be your life will inspire other people if so and so can make it i will make it Deuteronomy chapter 28 I'm reading from verse 8 in verse 8 it says the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto you must set your hand you must do something in all that you set your hand unto and it shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Give me a good amen. amen. In verse 12, in verse 12 it says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in a season. And to bless, and to bless, and to bless all the world work of thine hand the believer must have a work on hand and it is that work that you do if it is small start there if it is not what you're expecting start there i mean graduate but the only work i can get is this start there and it says the lord shall bless all the work of thine hand and thou shall lend unto many nations that's the kind of amen you have and thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow job chapter 22 we're looking at verse 22 job chapter 22 verse 22 receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up its words in thine heart receive i pray thee i plead with you god has created the world and he makes the world to run according to law and the law he gives the law to the earth 
and the earth rotates according to that law that's how you have day and night and that's how you have these many days for one year that's how you have january regular that's how you have all the months regular that's how you have the seasons dry and the uh, rainy season regular he has given the law and then to sow and to reap he has given the law and receive that law the way our brain will work and the way our eyes will see and the way our hands will coordinate he has given the law unto the person unto the personality and if you are going to make use of that uh, of that uh, machine very well you must know the law for example you buy a car and the car comes with a manual and you never read the manual and then you are driving sometimes your brake is on and you are driving and you are wondering you know, how is this car doing like this you push it forward and it is dragging you back you put your foot on the accelerator and the scene is still is making noise but it's not working very well and you are going to wear out the tire and you are going to wear out the line is and the brake why because you did not reach the manual and the laws that should guide you in driving that car and getting to your destination properly you did not observe but now as you look at our body and he has given the law how we function the time we sleep the time we rest the time we walk and how to work and how to concentrate concentration very important and now to make it and progress if you don't mark all those laws then eventually you say i don't know what is happening i look at the unbelievers in the world and they are the people prospering and here i am follow the law receive the law from his mouth and lay up his word in your heart things will change in your life things will change in your work you are going to work and the lord will bless the work of your hand look at verse look at verse 27 in verse 27 it tells us thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows in verse 28 look at verse 28 and thou shalt decree a thing i will decree a thing what does that mean there are people they just go through life whatever life offers me i'm all right you are not all right whatever i have whatever i don't have i'm okay you're not okay why don't you decree a thing why don't you say in this lifetime as a believer as a child of god who recognizes us of prosperity and is going to believe and is going to obey those laws of prosperity here is the way i will live set a target set a goal have a destination have a time limit don't just say i will be prospered that's too loose that's too general say i will have this by this time and because there's a goal you make a decree you search a plan you have a target you are able to work towards that target and because you're a believer and the lord has said open your mouth wide and i will fill it and because the lord has said ask it shall be given unto you seek and ye shall find not it shall be opened unto you and because he has said for everyone that asketh receiveth he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened because he has said what father among you if his child shall 
shall ask for bread will he give him a stone and then he said if he being evil know how to give good things to your children how much more shall your father who is in heaven give you good things because of that when you decree that thing it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways it will happen to you in jesus name psalm 37 we're looking at verse 3 in psalm 37 reading from verse 3 here it says trust in the lord and do good don't say my brain will not work trust in the lord and do good god has created you and you are a masterpiece from the hand of the almighty god and say i know god is good and god will be good to me trust in the lord and do good so shall thou dwell in the land nobody will shift you away from the land nobody will drive you away from the land and nobody will unseat you and destroy you and destroy the provision the lord has made for you and also the decree he has decreed concerning you in jesus name so shall that dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed i will not die of hunger I will not die of famine. Verily and surely and definitely thou shalt be fed. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. The desires of thine heart. Do you have any desire? I said, Do you have any desire? You see, that's the problem with many people. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I'm saved. I'm expecting the coming of the Lord. And if I'm expecting the coming of the Lord, what do I want to study? What do I want to go to school? Why do I want to make first class? Why do I want to have a profession? If I'm expecting the coming of the Lord, why do I have to look for work? If I'm expecting the coming of the Lord, why do I have to marry? Why do I have to have children? They don't have desires. Yes, the Lord is coming, but he has not given us the date. He might come this year. He might come in another 10 years. It might come in 30 years we don't know because of that you have a desire that while you are waiting for the coming of the lord here is my desire and because this is my desire and i present it to the lord and you say that's right my child i want you to do that i want you to be a symbol of progress unto other people i want the unbelievers unbelieving members of your family to envy you so that that prosperity you have will make them say if god can bless our brother our sister our sibling like this i think that that christianity is profitable i will join him and he'll come with you to christ and to the kingdom in jesus name delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart look at verse 5 in verse 5 commit thy way unto the lord trust also in him and it shall bring it to pass and it shall bring it to pass in your family and it shall bring it to pass in your progress and it shall bring it to pass in your successful achievement it will bring it to pass in jesus name you will have i will have I will have everything the Lord has provided for me in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 10, reading from verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. 
but I am come that they might have life. The thief came to steal, and everything the thief stole, the Lord has come to restore unto you. The thief came to kill, and then the Lord is rebuking the spirit of death in your life, and life has now come. The thief came to destroy, and what he has destroyed, the Lord restores and regenerates and reforms and refines and he gives you now a new life and a better life i am come that they might have life and that they might have each heart tell me out aloud say it for your inner man to hear that they might have each more abundantly we're looking at romans chapter 8 verse 32 romans chapter 8 we're reading from verse 32 in verse 32 he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all delivered him up for how many people for us all he delivered christ for how many people for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things how many things are you going to have the lord himself has given the promise the lord himself has made the provision the lord himself is watching over his word to fulfill there's fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now, building in obscurity while laboring for perishable prosperity. We cannot blame the people of the world because you have not told them about a better life. You have not told them about the spiritual life. You have not told them about the higher life. All they know is what they see. And for them, seeing is believing. And so what they see, that's what they run after. Unfortunately for them, and part of that is our fault because we have not told them unfortunately for them the perishable prosperity is all they can see and it's all they have but when we believers by the way new testament believers are very different from old covenant believers old covenant believer when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went to the sanctuary, Old Testament believer, and I saw their end, that they're going to perish. The Old Testament believer, the Old Covenant believer, looks at them and looks at their end, that although they have prosperity, they do not have the eternal life God ought to give and they leave them like that and they say well I don't mind their prosperity they're going to perish we are different now we know God is not slack concerning his promise but his long suffering towards what not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance we're not behaving like that man in psalm 73 i went to the sanctuary now i know their end now they're going to perish it's unfortunate it was like that but now we understand what the unbelievers in the world what they have and it is God who has given them the brain. It is God who has given them the prosperity. Why don't you go to them and tell them this one will last one day? Can I tell you how to keep your prosperity and yet have something more, have eternal life? But let's look at them now. The people who are unbelievers were looking at a Psalm 37 and we're reading from verse 7 psalm 37 
We're reading from verse 7. It tells us, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself. Envy not because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Fret not. If he can do that without prayer, I can do more with prayer. If he can get that without grace, I can get more with grace. If he can get that without being led and guided of the Spirit, I can get more by being guided and led of the Spirit. If he can get that with all the problems he has in his family, I can get more with no problem in my family because of that. You are not envying the unbeliever, you are at a higher level. Okay, let me put it for myself. I am at a higher level. And therefore, you will not envy whatever they have got, you can get more. I can get more. Look at verse 8. It says in verse 8, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Cease from anger. You see, there are some people, when they see uh, people riding uh, better cars than themselves, and they look at themselves, instead of saying, if I need that, my God will provide for me. If I need that, he has given me Christ, and he will also freely give me all things. Instead of thinking positively, they are angry. Uh, unbelievers, bad people wicked people who knows how much is told from the government uh, office to buy that they are angry and they, they have wrath but it says change your mind why are you thinking like that why are you accusing everybody you see who is ahead of you that they are thieves some of them are honest people some of them are faithful people cease from anger forsake wrath fret not thyself in any wise to do evil and then in verse 9 it says in verse 9 For evil doers shall be cut off Don't say amen to that That's Old Testament people All those evil people They'll be cut off We don't want them to be cut off I said we don't want them to be cut off We want them to repent We want them to glorify God We want them to honor God We want them to enjoy All the good things God has given them Oh you say pastor does God give uh, any good thing to those uh, righteous people? He maketh a sun to shine on the righteous and the unrighteous. And he maketh his rain to come down for the just and for the unjust. He's the one that gives them the breath and gives us the breath. He's the one that protects them in the night when they sleep and they wake up refreshed with new strength to get anything. It's the Lord who has done that. And we're saying to them, if when you did not know God, when you were any enemies of God, he gave you this and sent Jesus to die for you, how much more if you come to God now, he will do marvelous things in your life, he will in Jesus name, but those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth, they that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Did I get an amen? Yeah. Brother, what's, what's the problem? No job, no work, no profession, nowhere to earn salary, nowhere without to feed your family. Sir, I give myself to prayer and I wait on the Lord. And because I wait on the Lord, I don't have any time to plant my crops. I don't have any time to read my books. I don't have any time to succeed. And so because I wait on the Lord, here is the consequence of my waiting upon the Lord. You are not waiting properly. 
if you wage in the right way look at this look at this it says but those that wait upon the lord what will happen i said what will happen wake up and tell me what will happen they shall inherit the earth at least you'll inherit a portion even if it's a plot an acre of the earth at least you'll be able to inherit a place you will build your personal house on you'll be able to inherit the crops of the land and be able to feed yourself and family you'll be able to inherit all the provision of the lord from today those who wait upon the lord and i see them where are they those who wait upon the lord you will inherit substance in jesus name and then with that you will also have all the good things of life you'll keep on serving the lord you'll be healthy give me a, a good amen you'll be happy give me another amen you will be holy and righteous give me a good amen your life will be a fulfilled life in jesus name point number three now point number three beginning with opportunities on the ladder of preferable prosperity preferable prosperity what kind of prosperity is that third john only one chapter third john verse two in third john reading from verse 2 it says beloved that's you say that's me beloved i wish i above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth it says the possibility is there that you have this preferable prosperity your soul is prospering you are saved you are sanctified you are holy you are righteous and having things that will feed your body does not take away from that soul's prosperity and then it says that you be in health what's the use if somebody has money and then he has to spend all the money on hypertension he has to spend all the money on diabetes he has to spend all the money on rich men's sicknesses that they do not have rest of mind and they do not have a way to enjoy what they have but in your own case your soul will prosper your body will remain well healthy hearty in jesus name and then that thou mayest prosper material things and all that you need to make life rich and make life fulfilled and make life happy you will have in jesus name now how does that happen you begin with opportunities on the ladder of success the ladder of prosperity it's like a ladder and you start at the beginning and you don't mind you're not in a hurry as you start at the beginning then you move on as opportunities will open then you climb higher as open doors will come then you hold the ladder firm and you're moving up and up and up until you get to the top and then you look down at the bottom of the ladder and then you forget all the scarcity all the poverty all the sorrow all the sickness of the past all that will not climb with you on the ladder how do we start as we climb the ladder of preferable prosperity we're starting from job chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 6 job chapter 8 verse 6 if thou wert pure 
and upright surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous did he say amen to that one look at verse 7 verse 7 though thy beginning was small when you begin at the bottom of the ladder it will appear that the beginning is small do not despise the days of small beginning whatever you have make deal of that say i'm just beginning and i'm going to start at this don't say i'm going to be like that person who had been on it for 20 years i want to get there now hold on at that beginning starts there though your beginning was small yet thy latter end shall greatly increase second chronicles chapter 15 verse 7 it tells us be ye strong therefore as to a beginning at that small scene at the beginning of the ladder be strong therefore let not your hands be weak at that beginning don't be looking back and grumbling this is all i have after all those years of study don't say that do it and don't let your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded your work shall be rewarded as you dutifully go through all those things at the beginning that appeared small you will reward all your efforts in jesus name psalm 104 reading from verse 23 psalm 104 reading from verse 23 man goes forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening as you have something to do as you find something to do make sure that you are dutiful as i said earlier no teacher or lecturer or coach or trainer is going to come to your house knock at the door why don't you wake up why don't you do this you are the person to make up your mind that as i'm climbing the ladder of prosperity i go onto my work and i work hard there and i labor until the closing time and then in verse 24 it says O oh lord how manifold are thy works in wisdom as thou made them all the earth is full of thy riches and as you walk every day you'll get your own portion of the riches in jesus name ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 whatsoever thy hand findeth to do don't complain don't say this is small don't say i don't like my work develop delight and likeness for what you do appreciate it appreciate the fact that god has given you this if you're sweeping the ground do it happily and joyfully and do it better than anybody can do it if you are typing do it happily and joyfully better than anybody can do it if you are in research work do it happily and cheerfully better than anyone can do it whatsoever in any area of profession whatsoever thy hand find it to do do it with thy might do it with the skill do it with all the understanding you have for there is no work no device no knowledge no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest between now and the time you breathe your last between now and the time christ will come for you get excited and do what you do cheerfully and happily and the lord will make you climb higher on the ladder of success and progress in jesus name 
We're looking at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We're reading from verse 11. In Romans chapter 12, reading from verse 11, not slothful in business, the business you have on hand, the work you have in hand, not sleeping, not dozing. Come to that business with your mind, with your brain, with vision, with light, with focus, and do it with concentration. And do it not just to say, that's the best I can do. If that's okay for the boss, for the director, that's all right. If not, the worst thing they can do is to fire me. Are you asking to be fired? Don't do that. Get to that work and be your very best. Before you got there, unbelievers have been there. And they have done that same work. Or if not in that office, they're doing a similar work in another place. And they're producing results. And they're making it. And the market is moving for them. They're even getting awards and recognition. You are a believer now. And you have that work. Be no slothful in business. Fabenting spirit serving the Lord. You say this work I'm doing here is an expression of my serving the Lord. And the Lord will prosper you in Jesus' name. We're coming to someone reading from verse 1. Someone we're reading from verse 1. He tells us, he says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, and then nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of discomfort. Then in verse 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. Verse 3, this is for you. It shall, it shall be like a tree planted, by the, by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season, its leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. As we're going out today, whatever you lay your hand upon, that's going to be the path to prosperity. Whatsoever you do will prosper. Psalm 112, reading from verse 1. Psalm 112, from verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, you will praise the Lord. The blessing of God will stir you up to, please, to praise the Lord. The good thing God will do in your life, in your family, and through your life will cause you to praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Your children will be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3, in verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Make it personal. The Lord confirmed that in Jesus' name. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, his righteousness endureth forever. In verse 4, in verse 4, it says, Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness, your darkness will vanish away. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. In verse 5, it says, A good man showeth favor 
and lendeth as God is blessing you you're making it to flow to other people so that the blessing of God through you will flow to them he will guide his affairs with, di with discretion as as you are walking you know what to say you know what to give you know how to be a blessing to other people you balance your spending and you also save for what you are going to plunge back into the business so that there'll be a regular continual progress he guided his affairs with discretion in verse 6 it tells us surely it shall not be moved forever pandemic will not move you the storms of life will not move you whatever you hear from anywhere this happened to them this happened to them will not move you a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by thy left hand it shall not come near you no evil will visit you in your habitation in jesus name surely it shall not be more forever the righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance look at verse 7 in verse 7 he shall not be afraid of evil tidings it's a lazy man that you say there's a lion on the street and therefore i cannot go there is danger on the road i cannot go and there is uh, too much uh, pressure i cannot do this the one who is who knows that god is with him and god is with you when you go out the lord will be with you as you are coming in the lord will be with you as you are going to the place of duty and the place of work the lord will protect you as the mountains surround jerusalem so the lord and the angels of the lord will surround you all through your life going out coming in in jesus name they shall not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is fixed I have set the goal, my heart is fixed. I know the destination I'm reaching, his heart is fixed. That prosperity the Lord has provided and promised me, I will get it, I will get there, my heart is fixed. Nothing will destabilize me, my heart is fixed. A man like that, a woman like that, you will be a great achiever. A search is fixed, trusting in the Lord. And then in verse 8, it tells us in verse 8, his heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees desire upon his enemies. Verse 9, it says, he has dispersed, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The Lord is here and he wants to exalt every believer to honor, to gladness, to joy, to happiness, to wealth, to riches, to abundance, to prosperity. And then with all that, you will keep the eternal life that God has given spiritually you'll prosper in your health you'll prosper materially you'll prosper every area of your life will be filled with joy and the fulfillment of his promise in Jesus name rise up and be the man and be the woman that the Lord is intending you will be let's rise up now and commit everything to the Lord in prayer say Lord I thank you for the revelation I'm not like that isolated man who is envious at the prosperity of the wicked but now I know the promise you have given me the one you gave Abraham and the one you have given me as a descendant of Abraham walking in the faith of Abraham rise up 